So welcome back. Today we're going to be doing Dawn 3. All right, we already did Dawn and Dawn 2, I believe it was. Let's go ahead and hop into Dawn 3 and see if we can uh, get this guy. So we'll clear out here, see if he's back back. Uh, let's go ahead and make a directory or CD into Dawn 3. Do I have stuff in here? I got Dawn3.exe. Okay, I don't know what that's all about. Let's go ahead and uh, do this one. So we'll go ahead and do an MMAP scan of this guy like right here. I don't remember doing Dawn 3, so now I'm confused. He's taking a minute. Can we ping him? Okay, we can. Do you want to do a rust scan of him? Sixty-eight twelve. Okay. Whoopsie Daisy. Uh, where's that? Oh, I just jacked it up. Okay. Sixty-eight twelve. A map. Tac SC. Tac SV. Tac P. Sixty-eight twelve. And let's go ahead and see if that's actually a web address or some of that. So this is dot thirteen, right? Sixty-eight twelve. Can we neck end that? Like a neck hat tag V for sixty-eight twelve. Doesn't know what type of service it is. Okay, let's try to do another rust gap for it again then. Now we have port 2100. PFFTPD lib 3 1.56. So that's a, looks like an FTP server or something. I'm going to try another rust scan on it. This is super weird. Yeah, that's an FTP server. The NAM is login enabled. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, FTP into there. Uh, 2100, right? We'll do anonymous. Password, no password. Um, so we have a DAW3.exe. So what is this DAW3? So let's go ahead and pass this over to my Windows machine. Uh, let me get my Windows machine online first. That's the first part of it, huh? Get that machine online. Uh, we'll use Windows 7, I guess, 32-bit. We'll open him up first. And then I'll do a Python tech M simple server 888. So I can actually pass this dawn3.exe over to me. Or do I already have it, right? Yep, yeah, okay. Let me go ahead and do that. Instead of getting it again, because that would be weird. Start windows normally. We do another buffer overflow. Yo yo yo! What up, Al? Beautiful day today. Al's been crushing freaking Apex lately. I'll tell you that much right now. He has been freaking Apex master lately. All right, so this guy's all loaded up, and when you guys actually see the desktop on here. I've been doing a lot of Buffalo Overflow stuff lately. Um, I actually tried to take a test on it. Yeah, that was that was something else. Um, I did not pass that. I'll tell you that much like right now. Not even close. Um, that was actually kind of insane. Like that test for it. Um, like from when I when I told my wife it was like, yo, it was like learning math. You know, like you learn like you know like what is two plus two, and I gave you a problem, and it was hey, you know what is um. 3051 divided by you know 456 you're like what what no calculator and i just taught you two plus two it was kind of an insane test so instead of getting all frustrated stuff like that over it, i was like you know what that's okay i'm just gonna go back to my roots and just do what i do best and uh yeah so i'm going back to this and going back to um what is it more uh network security so we're in here now right there is that better i've been moving that thing around geez louise that's not better at all can I just like double click on that thing? Is that no? That's not good. I could just like automatically like, bring them like to like the window or something. 
because that looks like ass. Okay, what about that? Is that any better? That looks a little better. Okay, we're going to keep it like that. All right. Is that look any better? I moved it. I don't want to... Oh, God. Okay, that looks good. So let's go ahead and download Dawn 3. So we'll go to my P address first off. Let's go ahead and uh, grab that. All right. So we'll do a IF config. <clears throat> there we go. And from here, we'll hop into my... Windows machine. I'm just doing I have to configure on my uh what is it? Kai machine there. Then we'll go ahead and do that. 8888. We should see LC Dawn 3. Oh, I don't know why I just did that. I need to grab my actual real IP address, don't I? Let me go ahead and grab my not my real IP address, but my internal IP address to this network, don't I? So let me go ahead and grab that like real quick and we'll do this. That was stupid of me, huh? There we go. So we got that Dawn3.exe. We'll go ahead and download that. Save file. Uh, this is Windows 7, by the way. I just noticed that a lot of these. So there's Dawn, Dawn, baby. I noticed that a lot of these exploits uh, work more easily, I guess. They're made for Windows 7. You know, not really more easily, but uh, they're made for Windows 7. So go ahead and drop Dawn3 out here. All right. And let's go ahead and start him up and see what he actually does. We'll run him. He's not created, waiting for an incoming connection. Okay, can I do anything with that? Can I hit enter anything? Nothing, okay. So what should my incoming connection be? Since it is an FTP, right? So what do we want to actually do with this now? Like, well, how do we get into it? So we are gonna obviously have to do something with anonymous login, right? Uh, we have to anonymously log into it. We're going to have to do something with um, an overflow most likely, right? That's what it seems like. It's such like a buffer overflow on it again, which I don't know how that's really doing a blue team kind of thing. But yeah, let's go ahead and for anonymous logins, I'm gonna have to actually look that one up. So let's hop back over to Cali here. I know that I do have a thing for INE to be able to do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and look at my I my INE like real quick because we do have to log into it and that's what so the exploit needs to be able to log into it is what's going to happen there and that's what's going to give us that uh everything that we need I don't know why is this thing being so dumb can I just automatically resize right click Group, transform, stress the screen, fit the screen. There we go. Right click. Okay. There we go. All right, cool. So now let's go ahead and let's start to figure out how to actually hack the FTP server. Um, buffer overflow FTP server. And login. And that was the Pi, we might actually be able to look up that actual server itself. That was the Pi something, right? So we may be able to see, do we already, is there already an overflow for that? Because if so, we just kind of follow all that. That would make our lives even easier. So let's go ahead and do a, a map again for not really port 2100, but we want to do an MMAP scan on my local machine now, right? Because we know that it's up and running over there. So we'll do it like that, and that's going to be 192.168.0.36, I think it is. Because we know that it's actually up and running over there. And it might be dot .35. And it might not be any of those. I'm just going to grab that IP address like real quick. Dot .34, okay. That would have been the next one. That would have been definitely been the next step. Okay, so dot 34. So we know that he's open over there. So that 5357, or if he just closed out. Yep, so this is closed out over there. So let's go ahead and try to run it again and see if there's any ports 60, 6812. So port 6812 is now open. So we know that we're attacking port 6812 now, right? Which was, that was the first port that we saw whenever we did this first time. Correct. So we're pretty sure we're going to be attacking that port now. 
And so now let's go ahead and do a net cap back into there. We'll open them back up. I'm just opening them up in uh, the Windows machine like real quick to get them up and running. Do a net cap for attack P6812. I believe it was right. 6812, yep. Okay. Um, that cap. What? Tech V on uh, 192.168.0.34, and that's going to be 6812. And we have. We actually got a better one last time there. Let's go ahead and do it back to the box again, because the box actually showed us what it was, didn't it? Um, so, what was that box? That P address again. There we go. Let's go ahead and grab that box that P address, and we'll do this again. No, yeah, because it shows the FTP server, but that was on 2100, wasn't it? So that was actually on this, huh? That actually showed us. We don't know what that guy's used. What is Dawn using that? It says waiting for connections. Can we just do a Python? So let's do a Sublime. I think I'm making this hard, but it has to be. Let's do a Sublime exploit.pine here, right? And let's go ahead and import OS. Import socket. Right. Then we'll say IP equals 192.168.0.34 like right now because that's my IP that's running on like right now, right? Port equals 6812. Right. Okay, there's all that. Let's go ahead and grab one of the other exploits that we've already done so we can kind of follow up that guy. All right. So then we kind of follow off of him. That's not what I wanted. Sublime exploit dot high. Okay. So this is really what I want, just this stuff right down here. So we're not retyping everything in the world. Copy. Paste that down there. All right, so this is going to try to connect to the IP to the port address right. We're going to send that socket and everything right. So from there, let's start sending some A's. So we'll say offset, offset equals, and we'll say 200. We'll start off with 200. I don't know, might be lower, might be higher. We'll do buff plus equals A's times the offset. All right, and then that'll be it for now. Okay, we didn't get anything with that readme, I don't think. I don't think we did at least. We need to get anything else to that file, right? No, all we have is that DAW3. So <clears throat> we don't have to actually log in. I don't think we were trying to overflow an FTP server. We're not. All right. I don't think we are at least. Um, so now let's go ahead and see if we can hop into there. So we'll open him up in Immunity Debugger, right? Let's see if we can hop into there and uh, get this. So we'll open him up. Uh, what was he called? He was called Dawn again, but I think it was Dawn 3, right? Dawn 3. Uh, let's get him up and running, F9. And we'll try to fire off the exploit from over here. Save him a bunch of times, and we'll just try a quick Python um, exploit.py. Alright, 8 times offset. Buff is not defined. No, it's not. Okay. Um, Python... Probably 100% correct. First off, this should say buff equals like that. Whoopsie daisy equals Z. There we go. It should be buff equals because we're not adding anything. There's no more buff behind it, right? There's no buffs in front of it. So that's why we have to do that. Let's go ahead and run this again because we're not flussing anything on that, right? We're not adding anything else to it. it. Doesn't make any sense to add anything else to it if we haven't done it yet. Python exploit.py. And we'll see if he crashed over on the Windows machine. And he did. Okay, so let's go ahead and get back to here. All right, as we can see, there was a crash, but this crash, this is bad food. SEH, Shift F9, Shift F9. 
Pass along the exception and I'm just getting bad food. Okay. Let's go ahead and see if we might be able to take that down. Like, let's try like 100. Save him. Um, let's go ahead and restart that server in there, right? So we'll do a control F2, yes, F9. He's up and running again. All I'm going to do is fire off the exploit, see if he crashes. You guys will see it first. <clears throat> he did crash. We still get that bad food. Am I sending way too much or am I not sending the correct thing here? Do I have to send like X41 maybe? That's weird. Control F2. Yes. F9. We'll fire him up again. Um, I'm going to try to bring it down to 50 bytes. Uh, you guys can't see like right now. I understand that. And then from there, I'm just going to fire it off again. Bad food again, but we're getting more. Okay. Um, shift F9. No exceptions. There's no, it's not like an SEH right there, that, right? If we do a Mona SEH, see if there's even SEH handlers in here. There is. Okay, we do have a bunch of pop out rest in there. Okay. Um, hmm. There's nothing down here saying, hey, you can't do that. I wonder if it's like non executable on stack or. Because we are not getting much here. We're getting all these zeros like right here. I said too much or too little, I wonder. What's this bad food thing mean? All right, let me go ahead and try to bring it down even more. Now I'm just going to send it off again. I'm just going to fire it off again. We're still getting bad food. That's a new one for me. Shift F9. There's nothing to do with an SCH handler. There's obviously no SCH handlers over here anywhere. So there's nothing like that. So now we have to try to figure out what does that even mean? You know, like now we have to try to figure out like what What are you saying with that? What, what is bad food? Maybe I have to send way too much. Maybe I'm not sending enough. Maybe I send like, let's try like 2,000. I'm just going to change it to 2,000 like real quick. Let's send that off and then we're just going to see maybe. But I also think it might be because it's waiting for a connection. You know, it might be something like that where it can't do it because it's waiting for some type of connection. And we're just sending off these bytes at it and it might not be asking for bytes. So. I don't know. I do know that I don't have much time to work on this. I do know that much. Okay, so I sent off 2,000, and now we get all these A's. So, sending off too little, nothing. Send it off 2,000, and now we get our A's. All right, so let's go ahead and do a Mona. We'll do a pattern, so we can just stay on this page like right here. Make our lives easier. For you guys, we'll do a Mona pattern create. Mona PC, that will say 2,000. Okay, and then we'll go into that pattern create, right? So we'll go into the desktop, or excuse me, the C drive, program files, immunity, immunity debugger, pattern.txt. Where is it? Oh, maybe if I knew how to spell pattern.txt, we'll go ahead and grab this. Control C him, okay? And what we're going to do is we're actually going to put that on our exploit, and we're going to fire that off again. All right, so I'm just going to throw that into my exploit real quick. And there we are. Back to my exploit. We'll take these A's and we'll just go ahead and we're not going to times by the offset anymore. So we'll just kind of cancel that guy out. Okay. We'll just actually call this pattern create equals that to that. Okay. Go ahead and cancel that guy out. And then we can say SM bytes PC for pattern create, right? Go ahead and save that. And let's send it out again. Um, I think he's already up and running. He's not, so I'm going to do a quick control F2, F9. All right, 
uh, yeah, I'll send that off again, and we'll do a point.exploit.py. We'll see like wherever that pattern actually crashed at, right? What, what that pattern uh, crashed. So we did our pattern create. We crashed at 3572413.4. So let's go ahead and do a motive um, pattern offset, right, of that number. Copy that selection to clipboard. Control V. And we have an offset of 524 bytes. All right, cool. So now we can update our Python script for that. Let's go ahead and hop back over to there. So we'll go to offset 524. We'll say A times the offset, right? Yep. And we can go ahead and delete all pattern create like right there. There we go. We can come back down to S send. It's going to be buff again, right? So we got that. Then we'll do a buff plus equals BBBB. Make sure that we can actually control that. Then we'll do a buff plus equals and we'll say C times 500. All right, make sure we can fix some of the shell code after that, right? Control S that guy, save him a whole bunch of times. All I'm, all I'm doing now is just restarting that server in there. Okay, probably should grab the jump point also while I could, but whatever, uh, I'll grab it next time. And let's go ahead and fire that off again, Python exploit.py. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, get that window open and we'll see we are controlling the EIP now. And we have quite a bit of space, as you can see, like right here. And I do this every time to you guys. I don't change the font six. Oh, it is changed six. Never mind. We have quite a few bytes down here. We even have more that we could want. So we have quite a few down there. So we're good with that. So that'll be easy, right? Easy day. All right, cool. So now let's go ahead and let's hop back over into my Linux machine here. The Cali over here. And we will start to write our exploit well excuse me we will not start to write our exploit we still need bad bytes so and we still need to find our jump point right so let's go ahead and do a moda jump attack resp grab a jump point minimize out of here and we got two jump points uh we'll go ahead and grab this guy right here aslr false rebase false everything's false 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 across the board go ahead and grab that jump point we'll copy to clipboard the address now we will head back into my Python script and we'll continue this off. So we got our A times the offset right. Our B's are actually going to be a jump point now, okay? It's going to be our jump point. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to say, hey, because this has to be a little endian, right? So we'll do our slash x13, x15. And if you don't want the, if you don't know what this is all about, like right here, um, I do have many videos on buffer overflows that go into this much more detail, much slower also. So there you go. We'll make our jump point for the EIP area, right? So there's that. We still have our buffer, but this time instead of buffer back here, we'll actually send off the bad bytes. So we'll do a copy from, um, actually copy like that. And we can just say dog two, huh? Slash bad characters on pi. Over to here. Whoops, it is. Go to a Python 3 bad characters.py. So we grab those guys, see if there's any bad bytes in here, right? So instead of a C buffer, we can now do a bad characters. All right, my son is not happy because he did not have a very good nap today. All I'm going to do from here is just start up that Windows machine again, and then we're going to fire off that exploit again. So let me get that guy up and running, and we will fire off this exploit now. Python exploit.py. Okay. And let's go ahead and hop back over into my Windows machine. And sure enough, that all got sent through. So let's right click on ESP and we'll follow and dump. Okay, and let's see what we got here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You know, and all we're doing is just looking for those bad bites, remember. So I'm just kind of going through this guy like real quick. I'm not seeing anything so far, and we are on 50 now. Like I said, I do like to do this manually, not with Mona. I've seen Mona mess it up quite a few times. So I do like to just do this manually. And Mona will be like, hey, these 10 bytes in a row are bad bytes. You're like, no, it's the last one. Now, last time we didn't have any bad bites. It looks like it's looking like so far this time we're not going to have any bad bites. 
on the last one that we did for yeah there's no bad bites in here all right so we're good with that so we just checked out our bad bites now let's go ahead and check out a reverse shell right so well what we could do with this one is just maybe just pop calculator everywhere else but we could also make a reverse shell wherever we want to let's go ahead and pop calculator so we'll do an msf venom windows calculator we'll write that and why is it being written in ruby write that in c all right um let me bring you guys here okay msf venom tag p windows exe c all right command calculator tag b x zero zero that is a bad bite and we're writing in c-shell programming so all we're going to do from this thing is just pop calculator and that's going to give us our proof of concept which then we can change into reverse shell and set that off at the linux machine all right so let's go ahead and um put this back into here okay we'll do a buff plus equals we'll just make a little knob, knob slide here right so this is x90 times 16 and then we'll say whoops 16 and then we'll say buff plus equals our shell code here and there it is okay so there we go so I'll ask that a whole bunch of times and while we send this last one off now i'm going to go ahead and get that window machine up and right again i'll bring you guys over to it so we can watch calculator pop control f2 yes f9 and hopefully calculator pops i don't look like an asshole but it's probably going to be i look like an asshole xy.py anything happened nothing happened okay Go ahead and uh, exit out of immunity, like real quick. Let's see if we can just open them up and send it off again. Stopped working. Close the program. And calculator is not open. Ooh, really now? Huh. So this might take a little bit more than what I thought it was going to. Which is that's the case. That means that I'm not going to be able to work on this guy that much. Close the program. Okay. Well then. Just check over my X Blade real quick. Ha. Huh. Well then. I wonder if there was actually a bad bite and I didn't realize it. I don't really feel like sending off all those bad bites again. That's annoying. Let's try another jump. Let's try a different jump. Like real quick. So we'll do a control F2. F9. Mona jump. ESP. Tac R. Or Tac R. ESP. Let's try this jump. Be that that one's a call ESP though. I don't think that one's gonna work at all. Did I go the wrong jump? Maybe that's the problem. Maybe I got the wrong jump. Maybe I just need to work on this more like a little bit more. I think whatever I did, I think EBP was still being overwritten. Also, so obviously I don't want that. Let's throw them back into the Oh my god Let me bring you guys back into here You guys can see why this didn't work There's no X Now let's fire that off again um, this guy is up and running in Moda or in Beauty. He should work also in a Beauty debugger. Should work just the same. Go ahead and fire him off. And if you look at Windows now, we sure enough popped calculator.txt. Cool. All right, now we just need to change this up to a Linux machine, right? So let's go ahead and hop back over to Cali here. And we'll do an MSF Venom. Tag P Linux. We'll do the same exact thing we had before. All right, that should be my IP address still. I have config. 
.216, maybe it's not, 49.216. We'll keep that L port same. Okay, we'll go ahead and do a uh, NC tag LVMP for 13387. We'll throw this into our shellcode now. And now all we have to do is change off the IP address from up here. Let's go ahead and grab that IP address, 192.168.216.13. Whoops, where'd it go? There we are. 192.168.2. Oh, see, now I got lost. 216.13. Control S, we'll save him. All right, and let's go ahead and fire him off now. We should get something back here. Should. Don't quote me on that. Should. That's good. That's good. That's all good. It doesn't really seem like we're getting much, huh? Once you say 216.13, right? 492.168.216.13. That's all still good. That's good. That's the link shell code like right there. I did I did say it was an X86 system. It might not be. Maybe I should have actually looked at it a little bit harder to see what it actually was. So let's just do a that one had SMB in it. Or not SMB, you know what did it? Yeah, it did. FTP server in it. Let's try that. This may not be an x86 system. And that may have just broke invalid payload, Linux, shall reverse. Okay, let's do like a generic. Can I do something like that? And then that's payload type. It's a console attack queue. So we can go in here and actually see what the different Linux ones are. It might be Linux x64. Use exploit multi handler. Show option or set payload to Linux. Set tab twice, it'll show you all the different ones. Save that. Alright, that looks good. Let's go ahead and try to fire that guy off again. We really need more information on this guy, don't we? Like what type of architecture he is and everything like that. No scan. I have no idea what type of architecture he is. Twenty one hundred is the only port that looks like it's open like right now. Might be another reason why. <laughs> the port may not be open. So we're already aggressive scan operators have scanned it. Point one hundred. Whoops. I'll say, man, I came back quick. What we got here? It's probably an X eighty six then. Let's 
Try something like that. See that port's even back open again, or I wonder if we need to like reset the box. Cause like it doesn't open up automatically, I'm wondering. Okay, let's still ping it in. Why just be just not open? That's what I'm wondering like right now. He might just not be open. That port. Or if we do like reset the box each time or something like that. If we do like revert it and then not ping it or anything like that or not ping that port. My 100 keeps popping up, but 6812 is not. So let's go ahead and revert this box. I think that might be the problem like right there. And then from there we'll uh we'll do everything we need to do, hopefully. So I'll be right back. Sambo is not happy to woke him up. Is he waking up or is he still just chilling? You go back to sleep? No. I see you. Well, let's do it. Let's get something. What do you, what do you want for dinner? What can we get for dinner? I don't know. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Burger King? No. Popeyes? That's still chicken. You fly by? Yeah, we well, got to cook it. All right, so the box is reverted. I don't really want to ping it. I just want to try to send that out. I think. No, I'm not. You just left them to go I didn't just leave them. No, I didn't just leave them, Audrey. I have to see if this. There we go. No, because we had to revert the box, so we had to do that. 
And there we go. And we are root. All right, so that was that was pretty easy. Plus that LA cat that proof dot text. That wasn't too bad. Really, the hardest part of that was like how many bites already said that it to not have that uh, bad food or whatever. So we'll submit the flag. My son is not happy. He did not have a very good nap today. There we go. So we are done with Dawn 3. We just finished up Dawn 2. So, okay, there's also a local dot text, I take it. We are not done. Good thing I didn't close it out, huh? Well, let's go ahead and CD into home, I guess. I mean, I'm root, so I can do whatever I want. CD in Dawn 3. And we'll cat that local dot text, I guess, now. All right, there we go. Now we are finished with this one. Grab the root, then the local. There we go. Do it backwards. All right. Boom. And there's Dawn 2 and Dawn 3 finished up. Two more buffer overflows for you guys. And that's going to actually finish up buffer overflow September. Um, I may just show... Let me get you guys back into my Windows machine over here. I may show a few of these on there. You know, just a couple of the... Uh, on my desktop that I have over here. Let me just go ahead and exit off here. I may show some of these, like the FTP shell client. Um, I may show all of these, actually. We might go through all of them. Uh, but really, it's just more or less that's going to be like, hey, for Buffer Overflow September, we went through about half the month of just purely Buffer Overflows every video so far. And um, yeah, that's going to be about it. And I'm also trying to put this whole thing. I might have to get rid of the DOM ones because that's under Proving Grounds. I'm trying to put this whole thing onto uh, Try Hack Me. And I'm trying and then just have like a write up. So I actually have like Cherry Tree in here like right now. And I started doing like write-ups and things like that for it all. So I was gonna actually start to put like all like the write-ups and things like that out of here, and just you know, just have like, hey, this is how to do all that different stuff. So hopefully that helps you guys out, and the write-ups will be right inside the box there. Um, the Linux one, obviously, we can delete that because that one's not gonna be on there. So we can delete that one. Okay. And I was just kind of running like that. Uh, tell me you guys' thoughts on that. Um, I don't know if it's going to be even allowed to do that. Um, all these are... All of these are uh, public exploits, except for maybe these three. But I feel like this was also public exploit. I feel like I've read that, this one, somewhere else before. But all of them are public exploits and everything. And yeah, we'll, uh, we'll try to run it like that. Um... I haven't been able to rename this guy yet, so I'm trying to like rename him because I think he. Okay, cool. There we go. Uh, but tell me what you guys think about that. <clears throat> Make it so they can download them back to their own machine, you know, so they're not trying to do a remote desktop in there the whole time. I figured that would be a cool little thing to do for Try Hack Me uh, or a box to make or something. I also made a Raspberry Pi box, super easy to get through. But uh, yeah, that, uh, I haven't. I've been trying to get that one up there. How do you get auto suggestion in your terminal? So I'm using uh, Terminator right now. That's not auto suggestion. That's uh, stuff that I've already typed in. So it's not trying to auto suggest it. It's just looking at, hey, you've already typed this. So if I type in ping, I've already typed in ping 192.168.216.13. It's not really suggesting it. It's just saying, you know, that I've used that command before. So if I do a cat, last time I used cat, I used readme.txt. If I do an LSNACLA, there is no readme.txt in here. So, it is nice for like, you know, whatever, like you're like, oh man, what is that, cat, scripts, you know, okay, yeah, full shell, there we go, okay, cool. It is nice for that, or like scripts, and then like, oh God, it's SUID, yep, cool. So you don't have to hit tab twice, but that's using Terminator tab, or Terminator, for my, um, for my console here. Um... But yeah, tell me what you guys think about the box and everything. Trying to get that one machine up on. I really just tried to show you the whole thing. I didn't show you any of it, did I? There you go. Sorry about that. Here you go. So it's not, it's not really that. It's more of like a, uh, if I do like a cat down here, it's going to say readme.txt, but obviously there's no readme.txt in there. Scripts, full shell. Um, but yeah, it's not an all complete. It's just commands I typed in before. So if I start with SUID, all right, cool. If I do abusing files with start, it's because I've already typed those in before. That's why if I try to if I try to do like a cat for um, head test monkey, all right, that that'll still work. Um, let's see here, privilege escalation, also scripts. See how it's not all complete because I've never catted that limp piece. 
Now if I cat it here, right? All right, cool. Yeah, I cat it. Now if I do that again, cat, privilege escalation, also script, limpies, limpies as h. Now it knows, hey, you've done this before. But it won't show up for, let's say, one piece. Right? It's not showing up for that. So tab twice will allow me to do what I just did, like right there. Hope that answers your question. Um, if you got any more questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to get to them all or hit me up. All right, it's very handy for stuff. It is. It is extremely handy. So Terminator, um, I like it a lot more than TMUX. Um, works a lot better for me. I find that TMUX is, I don't know, it's a little bit too hardcore. I don't know. Everyone likes TMUX. I don't. But I don't like a lot of things that everyone likes. But you guys uh, all have a good one. Tell me what you think about the box for a try hack me or something like that. Um, I know I have to write up a write-up for each one of these. So that's why I'm trying to do them all. It's not that um, cherry tree document like right there. And then maybe just throw that GitHub or whatever. But we may just keep going through these and just kind of doing all of them in, the, in here. And... Um, and then I'll continue with those write-ups and everything. So then you guys have, you know, so we can utilize those as the, what I'm going to submit to try hack me to see if we can use this like right here. And if there's anything, I got supply text and notepad plus plus or anything you guys can think of for this. Let me know. Um, I have all server obviously in here. So that is going to be it though. You guys have a good one, and I will uh, talk to you guys later. Probably go to stream again tonight.